do, beautiful people. Welcome to another edition of Quick Dip. I go by Big Drip, a.k.a. Captain Planet, a.k.a. 33 Cent, a.k.a. Blackie White, a.k.a. Realest One Your Mama Ever Heard Of. To my left, right, right, is Get right. Jacked 141. Below me, we have a special guest today. His name is Christopher Mann. Big Hollywood type. Been there doing it for a long time. Chris, thank you for coming. Jack, please bring him in. Oh, boy. Um, so, folks, what you see behind Chris is, is just like a pinch of salt to everything he's been in. He's, you've been in Hollywood for about 25 years. You've been in Law & Order, The Wire. You, recently, you were in uh, The Nomads, which I want to talk about later because I loved it. Uh, Loving, which is a very important movie is, historically. And more recently, you're uh, involved with Disney Plus and uh, The Right Stuff. Yeah. Uh, so there's so much we can go through today. Um, I'm not even sure where we're going to start, but I think, uh, Drip, you want to get us started? Yeah, so, Chris, I, we, you know, I just want to keep it on the basics, right? Well, uh, how'd you catch the acting bug? You know, 25 years is a long time. It's longer than I've been alive. So, you know, there got to be a real passion, real love for it. Do you mind sharing? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I, I dabbled with it really lightly in high school. I, I actually started out doing some choreography in a couple of plays. We, you know, they had the little dances and, and back back when I was in high school, pop locking had just started. So, <laughs> so, so I, I did some choreography in a few plays where we get to pop in there. It was fun. Okay, stuff, you know? <laughs> I love it. And, uh, <laughs> but I didn't really I didn't really uh, start taking classes, man, until I was in my early twenties. I guess about 23, 24. Okay. Uh, started started with commercial stuff first, taking commercial classes. Then I said, oh, well, I want to dig a little deeper because just to me that was just hitting the, the surface of everything. So I wanted to get more into you know, the scene studies and, and character building and, and all that kind of stuff. So started taking classes with different casting people, uh, theater groups, uh, eventually went out to LA and, and did, did my run out there. So I've been back and forth, you know, between the East Coast and LA ever since. Okay. Um, got my first real bite. Uh, well, actually, I, I did the background stuff for a while too, man. That and, and, and one of my instructors always told us, he said, well, if you're paying all this money to study, and you want to be an actor, why are you doing background? Mm. You know what I mean? And it was mm -hmm. like, uh, okay. Yep. And, 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 and to some degree, a lot of casting people, once they get to know you as a background person, that's all they think about you for anyway. That's if true. Something actually, something actually comes up, they won't call you to read. They say, oh, he just wants to do background. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. that's what a lot of you get pigeon held by other people's thoughts, which is a horrible thing. Yep. Closed mouth don't get fed. You got to open your mouth. Got to make it abundantly clear what you want. Let me you ask you this. To... Now, it's very easy in Hollywood to... Uh, stray down the wrong path, if you will, especially, you know, the, the, the general consensus I hear is, you know, you, you want to get into it, you start with the theater, same way you did, and you get mm -hmm. into commercial. But after that commercial part, it's really easy to hit a left road and, you know, get on the bumpy end. How do you avoid that? How did you catch that right path? Um, I, I, you know, I, I think, to, for me, I, I would have to say, because I'm, I'm into this, this, this living from the from your spirit, you know what I mean? And, and what you want and what you cre create for yourself and, and believe in how you want things to be. Okay. So I, th I think that I, I, I attracted what I needed to come to me, you know what I okay. mean? Yeah. Um, uh, the right right instructors, right people, right conversations, everything, you know, I mean, not to say that there were some bad, there weren't bad things that, that you pick up along the way, because you, you know, a lot of people tell you, oh, it's going to be hard to do this, it's going to be hard to do that, it's going to be hard, you hear all these different things, and a lot of times, if you're not strong enough, you take on that because you believe what they're telling you, mm -hmm. and that becomes your truth, you know what I mean, you start hitting those barriers because you're expecting them, and it's the same, it's the law of attraction. Okay. And uh, even to this point, to the, even today, I even have to keep correcting myself to make sure I don't fall into those traps. Negative yep. thinking. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, man. It's yep. a real thing, man. It's Absolutely. real. No, yeah, that's very true. That's very true. I like the way you worded that as well, because I cannot, you know, we all we all get the doubts. Right. And especially when you're aiming big. Right. You got big dreams. You know, I want yeah, the top yeah. of Mount Everest. I'm not that's trying right. to go hiking. I'm, I want the top. Right. And it's, it's easy. <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. and haters will hate. Right. That's that's a true story. And nobody, yeah. you don't just say that for nothing, people. That's yeah. a that's yeah. a true statement. Well, they, they say they say if you're not doing it, if you're not doing things right, then nobody's talking about you. So if, you do, if right. nobody's talking about you, that means you're that's heading right. the right direction. That's right. My whole life, uh, <laughs> my whole life, if nobody's hating on you, you're doing something wrong. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, like Chris, um, I got to say this. I'm usually surrounded by him and his partner who are Bostonians. You're from Philly, right? Or you were born outside Philly, right? Well, I was born in Chester, PA. 
which, okay. is, which is really a suburb of Philly. I mean, you know, yeah. we're so close to Philly. Everything that happens in Philly, like the, the networks, the radio stations, everything is all the same. We're in the same general area. So yeah. it's just, it was, it was pretty much, and then, well, actually, and then I did live in Mount Airy as, as well for a few years growing okay. up. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, so okay. I'm, I'm, I'm from this area. Yeah. Okay. And then like going to LA, mm -hmm. to me, that's like terrifying. As I don't even like living, leaving Philly, but as a young actor, leaving everything, going back to LA. What is that like? Because to me, that's a very, you know, like climbing Everest. Yeah. What was well, that like know, for you? Man. Leaving home it's, and- It's like going to Mecca, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah, like this. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, my first trip I drove, I, actually I drove out to LA four times. Mm. So, you know, that's like mm. four trips back and forth. Mm. That's a lot of driving. Yeah, and you but, drove, um, oh my goodness. God bless you. Man, God I, got, bless I, got, you. I got, got a chance to stop and see Yellowstone Park and all that. You know, just, you know, I, okay. I did all of that stuff. The only thing mm -hmm. I didn't do was go see Mount Rushmore. That was too far out the way for me. Yeah, yeah. But, yep. uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I drove out, man, and, uh, you know, you, you get your feet wet. And you you, you got you to gotta have enough belief in yourself to even make yeah. that trip, to be totally honest, you know. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I, at one time, I was told you never go to L.A. until you're invited. But I wasn't waiting for that invite. Yeah, <laughs> that invite ain't coming. You got you to take it. You know, but, but see, then again, that, that all go, it all depends on what you believe, though, right? That's just mm -hmm. what we talked about before. Mm -hmm. But I, I was, you know, I... But I, I was young at the time, and I used to hear a lot of people say, "Go, go west, young man," and all that kind of stuff. So that kind of sunk in. So that made that made me get up off my horse and get up and go. It, it wasn't easy because I had the wife and kids. You know what I mean? So, you know, I was I was leaving them to go out there and and and, and uh, establish myself there, meet casting directors. You know, get my feet wet in the whole nine. But uh, you know, it was just one of those things. It's just like when I joined the union. It was like you know, a lot of people said, "Well, oh, well don't join the union so soon because it's not a lot of union work here." But if I want to, if, if my, the straightest line between two points is, a, you know, the, the, the shortest distance is a straight line. So yeah. if, I, if I know where I'm headed and if being a SAG is part of that thing, let me go ahead and get it already. You know what I mean? That, that was my, I drew my line quick, man. So yep. I, I jumped in a long time ago. There you go. You know? What do you think was the first, the first thing? So you did commercial, you did theater, you know, you said you did a lot of background. What was the first role that you had where, you know, you were on screen, you're in the movie or the show, oh. you have a presence? Yeah, yeah. Uh, homicide, life on the streets. I did oh, that homicide. Uh, back in 90. I, I, I think we filmed it in 96, but the episode didn't come on until 97. Okay. Um, I had a three had a three day guest star role on there, which was sweet, man, because it, yeah. it paid yeah. for my SAG card and everything. You know what I mean? And yep. uh, so that was my that was my that was my big, you know, debut uh, with network television. Nice. It was good. It was a fun experience. I mean, I got dogged a little bit on the set that day. I never forget that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had uh, actually. I was. I, I mean, I think we shot. It was three days. We shot three days. But one particular day that we were down, we were shooting in Baltimore, and it was February, and I got shot, and I had had, had to be squibbed. So you know, it's like, you know, once once the squibs pop, it's all wet. You know, the liquid and everything that's in those they pop, and I had to lay on the ground in the winter <laughs> in the scene. Oh. So I literally got frostbite out there, man. They had, they had <laughs> yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they they had to put me in a hotel with a hot tub and everything else, you know. Which hey. kind of made up, that made up. For yeah, it. They, I was gonna say, <laughs> hey, it's a little bit of frostbite for the jacuzzi. Anyway, put on the Libra scale. Yeah. I, I think I'm gonna go with the frostbite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I'm gonna take that. Yeah, it wasn't no fun on the ground, though. I ain't gonna lie. Not when you wet. <laughs> Not when you wet. <laughs> oh man, you know, you you would think like. They would have precautions set up, right? Like, so you're not you're not legitimately catching frostbite out here, but they clearly don't care as long as that shot gets shot. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I think I think because I was the newbie and they knew this was my my gig to get me my sad card. I think the director kind of dogged me a little bit. Matter of fact, Michelle <laughs> Forbes. I don't know if you remember who she is. Michelle yep. Forbes was in the I show. Love Michelle Forbes, and she, and she was livid about me freezing on the ground. She yeah. was living. She called yeah. him over and said, no, you should not do that to him, blah, 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 blah. And that's when everything flipped and they put me in the rest. He hooked me up. I, I yeah. still owe myself for that one. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's just unacceptable behavior. But I mean, that that's it, it's it's funny because that happens any and everywhere, right? You always, everybody dog the rookie, right? Everybody want to pick yeah. up the little guy. Everybody want to get on the rookie. Why? I don't right. know. Right. True story. Ex-football ex players with the rookie season is like, you know? Yeah, I mean? there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Millions of dollars, yeah, but, you know, you still... <laughs> It's still rough. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So speaking of homicide, which is set in Baltimore, ah. you were arguably one of the greatest TV shows of all time. 
yeah. it's one of those shows people still talk about the yeah. wire uh, <laughs> it's one of the few shows that actual cops say that's how it is it's mm-hmm. not like these other fancy shows it's like this um, right. how'd you get involved with the wire and getting involved with hbo uh that was uh actually i was i was it was originally a self-submission that i submitted down to pat moran in Mer- in baltimore Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to, to audition in New York, but you know, but she was doing the local casting in Baltimore, so I submitted. And it was uh, season three, mm-hmm. and, the, and it's funny because I had heard about the show prior to that because I have a brother-in-law who's a, a cop in Philly, and like you're saying, all the cops love that show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when he when he started watching, he gave me a call when they say, "Yo, bro, you got to get on this show." Like I had a choice, like it was up to me to just, call <laughs> you know. But he said, "You got to get on this show. I love the show." And uh, so anyway, I finally got the call in third season and um, I went down and, they, and they, they originally told us that we were reading for the mayor, which we knew we found out later it was already Glenn Terman. We weren't reading for the mayor. OK, yeah. Glenn Terman was, was already set up to play the role. And what they did was it was like a cattle call. Basically, they had us all come in, and read the same stuff and then broke us down from our reads into different characters they thought we could play. And uh, and so much time had gone by with them making decisions, I thought I had you know, it was past me. And eventually they called and asked me if I wanted to play the role of Tony Gray. And they told me it was possible reoccurring. They didn't say, they didn't give me a guarantee. Mm-hmm. And uh, it ended up turning into 12 episodes in two seasons. You know what I mean? So that was, okay. that was fantastic. So you have a lot of scenes with, um, I, I know his name is Garcetti, but I, little figure, what's his name? Aiden Quinn? A- a- Aiden Gillian. Yeah. Aiden Gillian, Aiden Gillian, yes. Yeah. Do they, when they're just making a casting decision, do they have the two of you sit down and see who bounces off him Back and forth. No, none of that, huh? No, I drop you on set and let you go, man. <laughs> yeah, I pray for that chemistry, right? That, yeah, no, that may, but that makes sense to me, right? Because you yeah. see countless shows and movies where that that chemistry is just non-existent, right? right. And if they like, if the producer and director had stuck his nose into it beforehand, then that that wouldn't be an issue. You know what I'm saying? True. So That's yeah, true. so they they really do just leave that up to y'all to the well, host. Yeah, I'm not saying that's in every scenario, but I'm in this particular one. No, I didn't meet him till we got the set. I didn't know who he, I didn't I, even know. I who feel he like it is the case in, in, in every. <laughs> you think it's everyone else? Yeah, I, I feel like that just because, like, okay. like, like you said, you know, for example, you said it took them forever to get back to you, right? So you already thinking, oh, well, I didn't get yeah. this one on to the next, right? right but right, finally, right. they did call you, meaning they got a million things on their plate, right? Yeah, they hire, they hire you as an actor, and they, you know, they expect you guys to come in, do your job. I That's mean, true. That's you know, true. fair point to me. Yeah. Now, with a role like that, because you're in season three a lot, you know, originally you're going to run for mayor, and Garcetti's going to be councilman, and then he's got his own plans. So you're there for a while. It was filmed. In, it was filmed in Baltimore, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do they keep you in Baltimore? Do they put you up, or do you have to take care of yourself? Um. It, no. Well, they put you up. I mean, it's. Okay. Uh, because I wasn't a season a series regular, I, mean, I wasn't yeah. in every episode. I just yeah. came down for the, the length that I needed to work on that project. It may be two, three, two or three days, maybe just one day. Yeah. But whatever the stay was, each time I went down, they, they put you up and take care of you while you're there. Okay. Yeah, yeah it makes Let sense. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been pulled over and say that I was in the wire? You've been pulled over by a cop and like, hey, you know, I I the wire. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta try you. it. You never know. Like, oh. <laughs> Because as soon as uh, I yeah. mentioned uh, you to people, they're like, that was Councilman Anthony Gray. I'm like, yep. Funny. Yeah, I need to carry a screenshot from the show. Hey, hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 you're you remember this, though, right? <laughs> Come on, the dog. The legacy of that show. I know, I know you was voting for me, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, dog. Don't play me like that. You remember. <laughs> I know y'all <laughs> like this show. <laughs> The legacy of that show, because, you know, right now they say we're in a golden age of television. There's like 20 new shows every day. Uh, There's literally a handful that everyone remembers. You know, Breaking Bad is one of them. Um, And I would say The Wire is one of them. I have people arguing back and forth which show is better. What do you think about it was that it connected with people compared to a lot of other great dramas out there? Well, I mean, it's kind of like what you were saying about the reality of it, because uh, David Simon, was a reporter for the police department in Baltimore. So these stories came straight out of what was going on on the streets in Baltimore. Oh shit. Yeah. You know I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so this, Baltimore is ugly. It's a, it, it gets yeah. rough over there. They, they, they changed a few names here and there from some of the characters, but the mm-hmm. events and the things that were taking place, it's all real stuff. So, I mean, you, you can't hide from that. They, they say what they say, fact is stranger than fiction. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's more interesting. 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it all boils down to, if you ask me anyways, it all boils down to relatability, right? And that, that's why it's so popular amongst cops because it is relatable to them, right? They watch it and like, you all been through very similar, especially if you're working in rough cities, Chicago, LA, yeah. even Philly, you know? And it's actually become a, 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 so, a sociology uh, topic in a lot of colleges. They actually teach mm. a lot off, off of the show. And, yeah, see, and that that's and that's exactly what you said, that realism, that, that yeah. holds weight. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, after The Wire, you've also done other cop shows. You've been in Law and & Order and SVU. Well, that's you. You're on yeah, criminal intent and SVU. I never, they never, I never got, yeah, there you criminal intent yeah, and SVU. Right. I, I didn't get on the main one. Did you play? Uh, <laughs> okay. Did you play well, the you same know, character? I think criminal both? intent was the best. No, SVU, man, right they, 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 SV, I know me too. <laughs> love that show. I'm a criminal intent fan because I love it. <laughs> oh, for you. Hey, Chris, Chris Maloney and Mariska were great to work with. Man. Yeah, yeah. 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 And Chris Maloney is probably one of the funniest dudes I ever met in my life, man. Yeah, because really? he's so oh, like God. he's so like stern and serious on SVU. Like, there's no Bro, joy there whatsoever. He is, he's hilarious. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it shows he because he does that other show on um on Sci-Fi with Patton Oswalt. Uh, Happy. You know what right. I'm yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. 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 So I watched that for you for years, and you know, my mother put me on to it. Big surprise, right? My mom will put me on the SVU. And uh, I, I loved it, though. I've seen damn near every episode <laughs> there ever was. And, uh, you know, so watching him and seeing him like that, you know, so serious, you think, like, this is their real personality, right? Because you practically walk. Yeah, no, man, he's... He Exact opposite, man. As soon as the camera's <laughs> rat, man, he he came in the in the, in the makeup uh, wagon one day with a long blonde wig on, man. He was tripping. <laughs> he was out of control. <laughs> that's good acting, though. That's acting one on one, right there. Oh yeah, man. That's that, that's good. For, I mean, you know, you get to stretch. You get to be somebody else. You know, every night. You know, every time you get a role, you get to be somebody else. You know, what I mean, you get to feel yeah. and yeah. make different choices and do all. You know, it's, it's it's fun. It's a fun gig, man. When you can get to work, you know. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's press. I got a question for you because like I said, I did it. Like I wasn't joking. I watched SVU for years and uh, okay. I've always been curious. Like, did you ever meet Dick Wolf? Never. Never. <laughs> yeah, who is this man? He's so <laughs> mysterious. Like I just, I I've never heard anything about him. Never seen him. He, like, I don't, it's, it's just his name. That's it. I don't even yeah. know what he looked like. The long wolf. <laughs> <laughs> it's what he's one of those dudes that are clearly, obviously, must be worth millions, if not hundreds of millions, but yeah. really keeps it under wraps. Like I've never even seen this man out in public. Lurking in the shadows. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, apparently, apparently. Because <laughs> I'm yeah. assuming, like on other shows you worked on, you met these producers and directors and whatnot, right? Well, I mean, of course, the wire. You mean I met all everybody. I did just twelve episodes, so you, you you know you you see them at rap parties. You see them at the season uh, kickoffs when they do, uh, you know. So you meet yeah. a, meet a lot of them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, great, great group of people, man. You know, what I mean, great. It was just fun working with them. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you enjoy more as an actor? Do you enjoy doing television or do you like doing the movies? Because obviously, there's a different feel. Yeah, I you know I like both, man. Um, TV, TV is 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 a, is a quicker turnover. You know what I mean? Like you know, unless, unless you're season uh, series regular. But if you like, say when you're doing guest star spots here, there, you know, you read one week, next week, you know, you're down for fitting, and they shoot in that following week. Whereas a movie, you have the script for a while, you get a chance to get all your scenes, then the beats and everything, work and work on it before you get there. And like on on uh, on the wire, you know, when it, when the episode pops up and they say, oh, you're in the next episode, boom, they send you the script. You got to get it in. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a quick turnover. So you got to yeah. really get it in, get, get get ready to do your shoot. Whereas a film, you have a lot more time to process what you're doing and make, you oh, know, make decisions, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, that's that's probably the biggest difference for me. Yeah. Uh, it's still, it's the work for me. Yeah. I mean, all of it, all yeah. of it's the same work. Yeah. Well, I mean? Let me ask you this about television, because you've done network TV, but recently you're on House of Cards. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell a story. As soon as I was watching House of Cards and mm -hmm. you see uh, Kevin Spacey, he's at the, I'm like, I paused it, I'm like, I know him. <laughs> I, saw you, I paused it. I'm like, oh, that's Christopher Mann. I know him. <laughs> I feel like you'd be hanging out all the time, but I was like, yeah, I know him. <laughs> but you're in House of Cards uh, and Mindhunter. Is there any difference in filming between network television or streaming? Is there more? Good question. So I'm curious. That's another good question. You know what? It's yeah. funny. So I'm curious. You say you're curious. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, I guess, you know, it would be, it is because like, you know, well, I, well, I guess they're doing a lot more network TV now because network TV used to be week to week, bam, 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 you know, like the yeah. episodes would come out, boom, boom, boom. Whereas when you're doing streaming for a streaming service, you shoot the whole season before it even airs. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. not a weekly, it's, you know, it's yeah. still on a weekly schedule, but it's not that time constraint that you got to hurt and get it done because they need the editing because it's got to air in another week you know what yeah, i mean that kind yeah. of thing so yeah so you have a lot more time in between that now it's funny you mentioned mine hunter though because <laughs> i read that role that i played on there um mm -hmm. uh you were the warden yeah i was yeah i was a um, deputy warden i can't remember his name right now but um <laughs> I, I think i think I'm trying to remember. I, it might have been almost two months from the time I first read to the time I actually got up to Pittsburgh to shoot it. Yeah, really, really. Yeah, that 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 was strange for me because I was like, "Yo, man, I, you know, it's still TV to me." You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. What's this long, you know? Yeah. Period in between. Yeah. It was a lot, and then because yeah. I read for it, and then eventually I had to go all the way to Pittsburgh to do a table read. Then I came back. And I'm thinking they're going to give me the rewrites in between if they rewrote anything. I got up there, found out they rewrote some of the stuff from the time I had the table read to the time I shot. And they, and they slapped that right on me. And I got to get that down now. I'm like, oh. Oh, all that stuff I had in my head has got to go now. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. that, yeah, more props to you, because that that's probably the easiest way to get me all discombobulated is last second changes, right? I, I couldn't I couldn't do acting. Well, especially if you got a month and a half, you know, learning everything and now all of a sudden you gotta you know yeah you gotta get rid of everything you had in your head for all that time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's that's horrible. Yeah. That's, <laughs> was that filmed in an actual prison or was that a, a set? Because that looked really grimy. It, it was <laughs> it was a it was a um, it was actually a, a a prison that had been closed. Okay. Ah, and, uh, that's why it's so gross. Yeah, and it was rumors that it that it was haunted too. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. I can't, I, can't, I can't remember the name of the prison. It's up in West Virginia. It's in West Virginia, and they told us that they used to hang people with that. They said I think that was the last U.S. hanging at a prison that was really the place at that prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, West West Virginia is is notorious, like the, and that yeah, their prison system to begin with is yeah. like disgusting. And yeah. it's just like morally, you know what I mean? So if that shit, if it got shut down, then I can only imagine the kind of nonsense that's going on in there. You know if, what I mean? I remember, if I remember correctly, the guy who got hung was a big heavy set guy and they hung him <laughs> and his head popped off. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. I'm sorry. It's 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 funny. <laughs> it's funny to picture. Like it, you, you know, he's he's a big boy. You know, he's a solid three twenty five. Yeah, right, right, right. Why about the noose? So you, like, why? <laughs> <laughs> it would be worse did he at least die or did he survive they gotta do this all over again yeah round <laughs> two <laughs> yeah. sorry I made a mistake <laughs> <laughs> no but that was that was a good show that was uh david fincher david fincher was the uh director on that oh really so you got to work with david fincher yeah man he, he he's 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 all the drill sergeant they say he is too yeah man. i yeah. mean he, he did 70 he's done so much and that show it, you know, there's a lot of murder mysteries out there, but that show, it's kind of historical fiction because it's loosely kind of like The Wire is kind of based on actual people. Exactly. These things. Right. Um, right. You know, the nature of the crimes. Mm. It's so, you know, because in that episode, you're, you know, they're, they're going to talk to another prisoner. So you kind of, um, you set up, a, what do they call it? A prison search where they go through your room and I, don't, I forgot what the right, term right, is. Right, so, right, uh, right. But like, um, when you play a character like that, do you do any research for that or you just sort of like you know you talk i know your brother-in-law you said your brother or brother-in-law is a cop oh yeah I, i've got i had quite a few uh police officers in my family one was i was gonna chief. ask you that too yeah, yeah one one was a police chief in chester for a long time um a close cousin of mine and uh a few other friends i had a couple friends in philly that were police, police detectives as well so i know i know a lot of, i know a lot of police officers mm. so if i get pulled over i'll say i'm friends with you yeah like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> jack you beat me to it because i was gonna drop that exact line <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. need that. <laughs> you got to watch your Tony Gray card. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chris, uh, Mount, Moundsville Penitentiary. Say that again. Moundsville Penitentiary. Does that ring any bells? That might be. That might be it. I got you gonna make me go ahead and pull that stuff back up. Man. It was uh, the spookiest it was place scary, in West man. Virginia. I ain't gonna that might, that's gotta be it. That's gotta be it. <laughs> hey, that's here in Philly, we got an Eastern State Penitentiary, and uh -oh. apparently they had like yeah, and actual yeah. ghost hunters come in and like yeah. that's a spooky well, place. This, yeah. this whole our whole section of the country is like that because we have a big presence, especially in Philly and especially in Boston. We have a solid mm. presence of the historical so society. 
And they won't let wow. you tear things down. They won't let you change nothing, things like right. that. And right, that, right. you know, that's why everything's so spooky, scary around here. And that's why I'm trying to move. <laughs> You trying to get out? Yeah, like <laughs> man, in Boston and Philly. <laughs> yeah, man, I'll do spooky, scary. I ain't with it. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Nope. That's Listen, funny. when you go to like Old City and you talk to the tour guys, they're like, "Oh yeah, everyone who died in the American Revolution, they're buried underneath," and it's like, like thousands <laughs> Sorry, of what? bodies. Yeah, and I'm like, "Oh yeah. wow, that's yeah. like, you know, true story." They just left them there. There was. <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, in, crazy, Salem, in, in Salem, Mass, right? If you want to, uh-huh. um, a yeah. lot of towns are like this in Mass, mind you, but in Salem mm-hmm. particularly, they're very heavy. And if you buy a house and you want to do anything to it, you need mm-hmm. to get strict, firm consent and confirmation from the historical society. They don't play games. They, I mean, this is like a lock upable offense. Like they you really bought- don't. Yeah, you bought the house, you bought the ghost to go with it, huh? Yep. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, basically. You're living a Stephen King book, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, because I, I want to talk about the nomad and uh, the nomads and loving also, but okay. what has been your best filming experience, whether it was movie or maybe just the atmosphere on set, movie television? What was your most favorite? Wow. Wow, man. That's a great question, man. I, I've had some really good ones. Um when you were on set on Bully with me, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. That, that was is. it. Hands down. I'm done already. No, but uh, <laughs> I think I, I, I actually loving probably would be the best. Loving, yeah. I no think problem. I would get loving the best. Um, I worked on um, Duplicity, which was great too, though. Uh, mm-hmm. That was, um, yeah, yeah, with, with um, Clive Owens and yep. Julia Roberts. Oh, yeah, that scene yeah. with him at the bar, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that was down in, that was at, um, the uh, Atlantis Hotel in the Bahamas. So, you okay. know, how, much, how much more fun can you have than going there? <laughs> there it is. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Do you see him real quick and then go hit the sites? There it is. You know what I mean? yep. Gotta love it. <laughs> so let me ask you something about yeah. uh, about loving, because from what I can tell, right, you've been in countless. So like, I, I honestly, I can't look you in the face and tell you I've been, I've seen everything because you're okay. in a lot, right? <laughs> You, you've done I have. your roles, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> so, but my question yeah, Jack, from, right, from right. what I've noticed that you typically, you do modern day roles, right? Like typically speaking, you know, it's it's a lot of cops, a lot of, mm-hmm. it, you don't go too far back. Loving, mm-hmm. on the other hand though, this is, this time place is quite a while back if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah, yeah, 58, it started in 1958, yeah. So how, what is that like switching it up? I mean, it, it must be like, it must be hard, no? I've been waiting for something like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You know, the, I mean, I, well, I ain't gonna say anybody, but I mean, the new stuff to me is kind of easy. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. When you're putting yourself in a whole different frame of mind and a different period in time and and and, and the thought process that they had back then, yeah. that's a challenge because now yeah, you gotta yeah. think you gotta think from a whole different perspective of how you would deal with people and how they deal with you. So it's yeah, a whole yeah. 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 It's it's a whole, I mean, it's a whole. It's a whole like. It's a whole new monster, right? Because it is. not only is it a different time frame, but you're a black man in a different time frame, right? And you know, yeah. we're not allowed to have free thinking and free free talking, and you really have to like tone it back. And and exactly. it's, and that's why I brought it up because it's not just like like don't please nobody watch and take this in any type of way or anything. Like we don't get political around here, right? But like no, no, no. white people, you go back in time, they don't really have to change too much, right? Like, yeah, the mannerisms in the language changes, but right. anybody of color or minority or even women for that matter. Everything changes. Everything right. changes. And that's you have right. to be a very, very different person. So that's, that's right. why I asked. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. no, you're right. That's, that's exactly and, what, I, that's what I was saying about the whole way you think about how people deal yeah. with you and how you deal with them. Yes. Who I am today would not fly back then. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And that movie, you know, when I first went into it, I thought, okay, this is it, it connected to the Supreme Court state. So this is going to be a courtroom drama. I thought at least most of it would be. But what I liked about it was that it really was, yes, there are some courtroom scenes in it. Right. It's really these two people. Right. And, you know, knowing that when I saw the movie, the first two words are, I'm pregnant. And inside, I'm like, uh-oh. Like, you <laughs> exactly. know what it says. I'm like, this ain't good. Because, like, even the way it's shot, you're not quite sure. Because the husband's yeah. like, Oh, that's great. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just like, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Rah, rah. <laughs> great for who? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the scene that I really, I thought, said so much where you didn't say anything is when the cops finally come the first time. Mm-hmm. They take him out. Oh, yeah. And then they get the girl. And then you walk into the bedroom and your reaction was, 
Well, I knew this was going to happen. It's not anger. It's not like, oh, stop. It's like, yeah. But, you know, and that's got to be hard because that was the mindset. That was the world you lived in. Well, yeah. yeah. What do you think was going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those moments like, I mean, you know, you know, my hands are tied, right? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you put yourself in this. I mean, even the car ride up when we were going to yeah. uh, in DC, you can see that in my face. Then I just like, ah, oh, Jesus, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. that was yeah. it. So at first, I was like, <laughs> is he angry? Because he says thank you, and I wasn't sure. Like maybe the dad might be against it. You know, her marrying a white guy. But then later, when that seemed like okay, so he, it's like you know, this was going to happen. You, you, this is the world that uh, the Oliver is his name. Yeah, the Oliver. Exactly. This is the world he grew in. He knows what's going to happen. Yeah, like, I mean, it's sort of like. I mean, he's hoping that it doesn't. I mean, I mean, yeah. he, he took the ride with him. You know, I got your back. I'll go with you, you know, reluctantly because, you know, but I'm hoping nothing happens. But at the same time, it's like chances are, you know what I mean? If you had to put some money on it, yeah, this ain't going to end good. You know what I mean? So it was, you know, but you couldn't, you couldn't say it. You didn't want to discourage them. You know what I mean? And especially you know? like in, in Southern culture, at least back then, you know, this is a very tight knit family. Like one of the earlier scenes, you know, you're all just eating dinner. Yeah. And I loved it. You know, it's like sort of like one of the calmer moments. Right. So when they have to leave, you know, like in today's society, you know, you leave your parents, you move to another town. It sucks, but it happens. But they have to leave and come can't come back for 25 years. Mm-hmm. And when she says goodbye to you, I think you just say, yeah, OK. You said something small because, you know, mm-hmm. you can't give a long oh, goodbye. Oh, I mean, the day that they left out. Yeah, I, she I just, just looks at you and you're like, Yeah. You know, no, I asked like, was she okay? I, I, I just said, are you, I, I asked her, was she okay? Because, I mean, you know, I know you got to do this, but, you know, are you okay? Like, you know, yeah. you know, I, I, I know it's tearing us apart. I know it's got to be tearing her apart. Yeah. Um, you know, and are you okay? Like, are you, you know, t- kind, kind of like really want to know, you know, if you want to back out, let us know. You know what yeah. I mean? But, yeah. you know, are you okay? You know, once you say, yeah, all right, fine. You know what I mean? And the, the character, uh, the Oliver, you know, I looked him up. You know, he, he, his wife lived a, a long time, but he passed away in 1968. So now you're playing a real person. Mm-hmm. But even uh, uh, Richard and Mildred, they're no longer with us. Um, do you, how do you get into that character? Did you just have to assume? Did you do any research? Because there's very little written about the Oliver. Well, you know? it, I didn't have to look too far for that. Um, my, my family, I, both sides of my family, one's from Georgia, the other's from North Carolina. Oh, there you go. A lot, a lot of farmers in the family, a lot of hunters, people that came from the South. So, yeah. It really wasn't that hard to look. You know what I mean? Uh, with my mom, they, they all body the same character as me to a degree. You know what I'm saying? It was like, you know, I, I, I know, I know, I know that geographic area and what how the people are there you know what i mean so i've got around a lot of folks from there so. yeah it wasn't that hard it wasn't yeah. Yeah, you know the movie starts in 1958 but the, the supreme court thing happens in 68 and it's like crazy you know that's four years after civil rights and there were still laws like that in the country and, you yeah know, a lot of times you yeah. think after 64 all that was over no no no, no god no uh, it it went well uh, especially in the deep south it went well past I, i'd say the 80s it wasn't until the 90s we saw a real change yeah yeah i mean i was actually born before that that court case came out you know yeah yeah, so, yeah absolutely so were my parents uh, yeah absolutely yeah. where did they film that was did they film that in virginia or yeah, that was all Virginia. See, I always, I have a very hard time watching movies like that, especially when they're placed down south. Virginia is by far the, it's either Virginia or Mississippi is the best example. I have a very hard time watching movies like that. It gets yeah. ugly. Down south was not a pretty sight. Uh, one of my all time favorite films will be, was Django Unchained. And okay. uh, the way they, they brought down, um, the way they were breaking down how Mississippi was at the time, mm. right? Like, so Tarantino, like, you know, he has that style and like he throws humor into his movies and whatnot. Django was no exception, but right. I think he did a good job of of keeping the serious tone when it came to what, how bad it actually was down oh, south, yeah. you know? Oh, so, yeah. and, and, yeah. and, you know, seeing things like that, it, it, it's, it's, it's honestly bothersome, right? It really makes my stomach turn. So like hats off to you to be able to perform and put on uh, that 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 show and act in such a scenario because I would not be able to. Yeah, yeah it, it's tough. I mean, even even I mean, if you if you I don't know um, what's her name, um, Golly, the uh, lady who did the uh, documentary on it um, about the Lovings, and if, oh. if you if you ever watch it, it's, um, you you'll hear you you will hear Mildred say, uh, "They burned a cross on my parents' lawn." Mm. 
So the movie didn't get into all of the ins and outs and things that the whole family had to deal with. You know what yeah. I mean? It, doubled, yeah. it, it focused on them. Yeah. So it was a lot more to the backstory as to what happened you know, to the whole family in, yeah. in, that, in that scenario. But I mean, you know. It's just it's, ruthless. They were ruthless. It's rough, there's there's yeah. a lot of subtle things. You know, I, I never really heard of Jeff Nichols un, until I saw this movie. Yeah. But they're subtle things. And I think they were intentional. Like the first scene you have, they're racing. You have a black guy and a white guy racing in a car. Mm-hmm. The black guy's in a blue car, right? The white guy is in a red car. I'm like, that's on purpose. I don't <laughs> know, like, you know, like, I was like, that. A lot of you know, symbols. Want to represent yeah, yeah. progress and change, and not to get political, but you know, like I was like, that that had to be intentional. <laughs> yeah, There's absolutely. I thought I, I actually laughed is when um, uh, Mildred uh, Ruth's character says, "Oh, we're going to Washington. There's less red tape there," and I start laughing like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's good stuff. That's yeah, good. yeah. You know, here, here's here's something that uh, I don't know. I didn't. I don't know if I told this before, but while we were there, uh, um, Winter Lee, the girl who played my wife, played mm-hmm. uh, the mother. Uh, we, you know, we went on our little journeys riding around Virginia in the areas to see if we could actually find family members of people that knew them. Oh, okay. And we did. We found a cousin and we talked to, and then he pointed us to Raymond Green's. Raymond Green was uh, Richard's best friend that helped him in and out of the oh, state. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So we actually met him. We went to his house, man, and sat it. down and talked to him, nice. man. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, man, what a conversation, man. And it, it, I, I might as well spill it because they're not going to do a sequel. <laughs> Um, he told us that, um, cause you know, you know, uh, Richard uh, died in a car accident. Um, was it like seven years after the, yeah, uh, he, he died much sooner. Like she's his wife. Yeah. Lived a while, but Well, the, the accident happened down the road from Raymond. And he oh. said that, um, the police came to his house that night and, uh, said there's an accident down the road. I need you to come help us, you know, you know, with the, the, with the accident. So he said he had no idea what was going on. He got down there and found out it was Richard. And yeah. uh, Richard, Mildred, and her sister, they were all in the car. Um, her sister got thrown from the car. Mildred lost her eye in the car. Mm. And and Richard died in his arms. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh. That's, that's dark. Yeah. That's dark. We took you know, a dark turn. We took a dark turn. That was, that was amazing because, you know. That was, that was like, man, I, when I heard that, I was like, oh my mm. God, you gotta be kidding me, man. Yeah, hits you right home. And you're, 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 you're in, at this point, you're, you're invested, if you will, right? You're deep into this, you, you know, you, you're you talking oh, to family yeah. members, yeah. you yeah. train them, you know? And I got that before we shot any of our scenes, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, yeah. wow, that was just that, like, knowing, you know, the full yeah. impact, you know? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a bullet in the chamber, if you ever ask me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Uh, Justice, you mentioned like, you know, how anytime you watch a movie set in that period, mm-hmm. but in this movie, and I mean, the cops are always scary in them, mm-hmm. but in this one, they're just kind of making up laws as they go. Mm-hmm. Like, well, you know, God put them over there. He put us over there. You know, you're all, he yeah. says, to Richard, you're all mixed up because you grew up in that. I'm like, just making that up. Like, you know, <laughs> it's not a law. Like, they, they still make up do. as they go. They still yeah. get made up as they go to some degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They Absolutely. really do. Absolutely. Some and, are followed uh, at certain times. Some are followed and not followed at the, you know, in the same scenarios with different people. You know, what I mean, it's just yeah. making it up as they go. So yeah, yeah. I have one question about that movie, mm. and I'm not sure if they answered it, but I think it's implied. The first time they got caught, um, Joel Edgerton's character says, "Well, who talked?" Mm. Who told them? And I always kind of got the feeling that it might have been the uh, Ruth's, young, uh, not Ruth, uh, Mildred's younger sister because she was upset. And I always felt like, you know, because they leave it vague because maybe they don't know in real life who called the cops and let them know that there was a mixed married couple. And I was like, is that what they're trying to say? That maybe the sister, younger sister was a little bit upset? I don't well, know. The reason I wouldn't go there with that one with her is because, I mean, if if, if the whole family's being terrorized by the police yeah. and, and the neighbor, she's not going to approach them. Well, you then my I mean? second choice was um, his mother, because his mother says, you've done a stupid thing. He's like, I thought you liked her. And, and she's like, I like a lot of people, but you still did something stupid, something like that. And yeah. I think that was so poignant because a lot of times, yeah. you know, <laughs> especially modern racism, it's like, oh, I got a black friend or I have a gay friend. Right. But like, yeah. you still want that distance. And I thought that yeah. was amazing because this woman lives with them delivering the baby, but she's like, you did a stupid thing. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I feel, I feel it's not even necessarily racism, right? It's just, they're scared. What, what am I supposed to do? Right. It's specifically right. speaking on this, this character you just speaking on, what is she supposed to do? Like whether she's a racist or not, she's right. You know, at the time, that's a dumb move. 
Having a right. mixed child is a dumb move. Your, your life is going to be hell, and they're never going to let you forget about it, right? And and, and, and right, and, 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 and law enforcement's coming by. They're still questioning her, so she's under pressure, too. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, she may not be under the same pressure as Mildred's family, but it's yeah. still her. I mean, and, yeah. and they, they're still being targeted, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. another great scene in the movie, because you brought that up because she's targeted, is um when... um. I keep wanting to say Ruth, but Mildred's brothers are all at the bar. They're at a black bar. He's like, and he says to uh, Richard, you never know what it's like to be black. Oh, yeah. And now you kind of do, don't you? Because you <laughs> now he's getting hated on yeah, for yeah. marrying <laughs> a, a black woman. He's like, well, you're kind of black now, now that you think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's a good scene. I it was, it was. By yeah. association. That was my that's my man Will Dalton played that man. He uh yeah, that was a good scene, man. He's like, all you gotta do is leave her. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I man, you got was about to break out of that scene. It's like all you gotta do is leave her, divorce yeah, her, and then you know, yeah. you'll be free. Yeah, yeah. And you it's can a, have it's, your life back. You can have a, your life back. We 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 stuck here, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, we can't sure. go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's right, a right. it's an interesting perspective. I'm uh, my myself, I'm mixed, and but it's it's okay. uh, it's more of the classic standard. My father's black, my mother's white. And that's typically okay. the, the scenario you see. But yeah, I think it's always right. an interesting, because um, it, it, if we're being honest, it doesn't happen as often, a white man with a black woman, especially at, in the time, in the area they're living in. I mean, it's it's definitely a unique right. story. Yeah, yeah. Well, oof, like, if we go back, if we want to take it a little further back into slavery. It yeah, was, I was about to say that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But most of that was forced, though. You know yeah, what exactly. I mean? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, Consensually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There wasn't no love affairs going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know not, I mean? No, not that time. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that, that's a beautiful movie, and it's an important movie. Yeah, it is. It's last very five, six years. It's a very important important movie. Movie, uh, but more recently, kind of playing on the maybe on the topic of race was the Nomads. Okay. Which thank God I was able to find on Amazon. Okay. I I usually don't like sports movies, but I love this movie because <laughs> again I thought okay this is going to be about them they have to eventually face like a big team and defeat them no 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 it's about <laughs> these kids about this school and how rugby has become you know a way for them to channel their anger their frustration with their uh, you play principal was it. Oh, God, I'd right. play so many roles now. What's his name? <laughs> um, I should have looked this up before. <laughs> I got IMDB up here. Principal Wade. Principal, Principal Wade. Wade. That's, that's him. I, know, I, reckon, I reckon I resemble that statement. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew Loving was a true story, but this is a true story. It only happened recently, 2013. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And the idea of, okay, so you have these kids, you know, it's, it's and North Philly is, Five blocks away from me, you know, like where it begins kind of Alney Station and uh, Broad and Alney. That's where North Philly starts. You're right there. And, you know, we see this around us. So this teacher, she's like, she has this idea. She's a new teacher. Uh, I forgot the actress's name. Um, Tika Sumter. Tika Sumter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rugby, let's take that physical energy these these guys have and let's gear it towards rugby and channel that aggression, that frustration. And uh, my favorite character was the one kid named Jamie. Um, he was the one who did a year in jail right. and now he's like, all right, I'm doing rugby, but that life is chasing him. They're like, Hey, you still owe me four stacks. That's right. And the guy's like, look, I went to jail for you. And just talk to me about that. Cause you, you've lived in Philly all your life. You went to school. Did you see any of that growing up? Um, uh, yeah. All right, man. I mean, I, yeah. Chester. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, they, I mean, yeah, I had friends on both sides of the fence, you know, some that were straight students and some that lived the street, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you saw that all the time. Um, yeah. Not so much where, you know, like somebody was in the sports and, and, and the thugs were pulling them out, out of practice and, and, yeah. and harassing them. Yeah. yeah. But you know, there, there was cats that were making money, you know what I mean? You know, they, I mean, they driving cars in high school and they live in the projects. Come on, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you know. We're not dumb. I know what you're doing. I'm not dumb. Right. I, right, right <laughs> we know right. what's going on. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, I say, man, and it's funny, but I, but I know some couple cats that had jobs in high school that lived in the projects that bought cars too. But, but, mm-hmm. I, but I knew, that, but you know who was who. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You yeah. can you can tell from a mile away, right? It's exactly. it's usually the it's usually the chains you get around the neck. That's usually we can tell. <laughs> right, whole yeah. boy working at Dunkin' Donuts does not have a solid gold twenty four karat pinky ring. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. I I'm, like, I'm, I'm gonna be totally honest though. Like being from 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 where I was from, man, you, you never judge the book by the by the cover. You really had to know the person. 
That's true. I mean, that's I'm not going to lie. Seriously. Well, I think that's why this movie is important because especially in the last few months, we've seen, you know, protests and writing. People tend to judge. They use mm -hmm. certain, like, keywords like thug and stuff. And so this puts you in the shoes of these kids. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, one kid has a disability. You know, he has trouble learning. And and I, my favorite one, my scene with you, where um, uh, Tate Donovan and her come to you and they're like, rugby. And you're like, rugby? Oh, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> and I'm, I'm like rugby. Like I didn't know Philly had rugby, but um, because basically the story is like three high schools have collapsed into this one school, so they have too big a football team. Yeah, they got budget and, cuts, and they had to had to close a lot of schools, so all these schools are combining. Right, right. Yeah, so we barely so, got enough to do what we got with what we have. Now we got three times as many students. You want to do what? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, the effort these kids put in, you know, they start doing car washes. They make a YouTube video that becomes number one. Right. There's like, you know, if you can. <laughs> Um, her friend says to her, "You have a niche, or you." I'm trying to remember uh, what what she says to her, but like you know, you have an opportunity to go to a better school. It sounds like a Catholic school. Like in the later act of the movie, you know, go, you know, more money, more things, and she realized that she's making a difference here. Hey, right. Donovan says later, like, "There's always another kid. You right. know, you, you help one kid, there's another kid." Um, were you uh, at the end of the movie? They show some of the real life people. Were you able to meet any of them who actually were involved in this? Uh, yeah, actually, the um, teacher who actually uh, Tika Sumter uh, played the character. She was there. She came to uh, uh, I think one of the first screenings that we had. Um, okay. There was actually uh, I can't I don't remember which player it was. It was a guy who played who was actually one of the students who was on the team. He came. Uh, okay. I, that might be the only two that I remember offhand. It was two people, one of the teachers and one of the, one of the kids there. Uh, they, you know, he's a grown man now, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they, 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 they came to a couple of screenings. So that, that was nice to meet them, man. And, uh, yeah. So, Chris, it, it seems to me that a lot of a lot of things you star in tend to have a message behind them, right? This isn't just entertainment. This is to bring knowledge to the audience. Do you do that on purpose or or is that just happened to be the roles you land? I think that's another law of attraction, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I didn't pick them. Matter of fact, the loving thing, when it first came to me, it didn't even sound like something I wanted to be bothered with. Yeah. Because they said it was a low budget shooting in Virginia. So I could do one of those in Philly. I, you know, yeah. 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 I'm thinking I might have to drive down there on my own. I got to, you know, I might even have to wear my own clothes. Cause you know, when they say low budget, that there's usually no money. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring your own wardrobe, bring your own coffee, yeah. bring your own everything. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Matter of fact, yeah, Diggy, you, you might have to direct your own scene too. <laughs> you got a straw hat at home. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but uh, you know, as, as things went on, it kept coming, they kept coming back. They want to see me on tape. I said, okay, well, maybe. And then, and then eventually I went on IMDb. I said, well, who are these people? And I, and I, and I looked it up. I come to find out this, this, this project had been in, in the works for a while. And at yeah. one time, Scorsese was attached to it. Really? Really? Yeah. Scorsese, yeah. huh? And, 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 and Colin and, Firth produced it. Is it the same Colin Firth, the actor? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because oh, I saw sure. his name up there. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, but like I said, at that at first, when I first pulled it up before they had changed the information on their Scorsese's now, what man, Scorsese? And then I looked up Jeff Nichols. I was like, wait, this ain't no regular, you know, low budget independent. Yeah, yeah. Something's going on here. <laughs> so, so by the time I got down there, I was like, all right, let's get this going. I like this. I know this is going in the right direction, man. And, yeah. and, and like know, I said, when, when, sorry, go ahead, you, go ahead. You get once you get into the concept and what's going on, what you're really dealing with, man. It's like yeah. you know the impact of it. I was like, you know, this is a blessing to do this, man. Yeah, you know there I mean? it is. There it is. Attraction. Yeah. yeah, we've talked a lot about this in our show because you know we talk about pop culture, and it seems like we're getting to a point, especially in cinemas, where unless you're a big budget action movie, everything feels low budget or might come off as low budget. Mm. It's in not comparison. a two million dollar movie. Absolutely. Yeah, in comparison, right. you know, yeah. um, you know, a movie like Loving, I feel like, you know, um, as good as it is, you know, sometimes gets drowned out, you know, by the next big blockbuster that you got to go see and all that stuff. Right, right, um, right. What has been your experience as sort of like Hollywood has for the last 10 years? You know, it's been like, you know, blockbuster every other week. Do you think that because Scorsese talked about this, how he feels like you know, this is a real cinema and people reacted neg negatively to that, you know, about these big blockbuster films. What are your thoughts about that? But like how it's kind of changing, it, it, has I, been changing. I, I, yeah, I think it has. I mean, I mean, you know, we've gone through the the whole DC Marvel comics thing. You know, what I mean, so, and the, you know, I guess it's just a generation of adults who grew up reading comic books that day. You know, so they 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 flood, <laughs> they flooded, yeah, yeah. they flooded, <laughs> the, you know, theaters with them. But um, 
Yeah, a lot of a lot of movies are getting done on smaller budgets, but enough to get you know two three names to carry them. Yeah, and um, yeah. and then they'll, they'll go through the different distribution routes. Like Loving didn't take a regular distribution route. I mean, it was like you know it it kind of did a little rolling theater thing from here to there, a little bit yeah. here and there, but yeah. never all not not a widespread you know uh, theatrical release. You know, um, and a lot of great movies are coming through like that though. I mean, it's because yeah. it's and streaming now they're just going directly to streaming. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So so that's what I mean. Yeah, it's changing that in that respect. Um, you ever uh, thought of uh, dipping your toes in the uh, in the comic scene? I was about to ask that. That was my question. <laughs> I, I I was I'm sitting here, as as you guys were talking. I'm sitting here. I'm looking at you. I'm trying to put a character to you, and uh, I could. Do you know who John Stewart is? Oh, not, not the not not, not the uh, Comedy Central guy, but the Green Lantern. He's the, yeah, uh, no, like oh, like okay. superhero wise. Oh, oh wow, okay, yeah, I know who you talk about now. I mean, not yeah. that, not Jack yeah, cleared he, it up. He, he was the <laughs> he was the first black black Green Lantern, and uh, wow. he was a big deal because he he was created in the seventies, and at the time we didn't have too many black characters, right? It was really mm. just him, Black Panther, and I think Black Lightning um, gotcha. um, was around at the time, and. Mm. Uh, Typically speaking, John's like portrayed as just a tad bit darker, but mm -hmm. generally, but you have the look and mm -hmm. John's a very kind of stern kind of guy, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah, he yeah. has like very similar to your personality. I could see, wow. uh, I could see it being a good fit. Give up Zack Snyder a call and see if he'll out. Uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to get the director Zack Snyder on our show. Really? Because uh, we got the villain from the Justice League movie on the show. Or they got him before I joined back in some, uh, November. So yeah, if we get Zack it. Snyder, I'm going to say, listen, this is uh, Drip's idea. Uh, Chris Mann as Jon Stewart. <laughs> I could ready. see it. I could see I'm it happening. Yeah. And he's and, and you, you played the Green Lanterns are just uh, space cops. That's all they yeah. are. So oh, you'll, man, you'll be right at home. <laughs> Come on, man. I got that. <laughs> that's, that's easy. Me. I was born. I, it's funny. You know, it's really funny. Like when I was a real, I was a small kid, I had an uncle who I used to go visit down in, in, in Delaware. And I played cops and robbers with him every time I went down. I was always the cop, man. Yeah. Always the cop. Yeah. So I grew up and and it, it carried <laughs> it carried on to my There it is. There it is. You're a cop in um Michael Clayton also. Or or was it a secure? I wasn't sure. Like um, yeah, I was the um I was a cop in Milwaukee. I'm trying to remember my character's name, and that was a, that's been a while ago. Yeah, uh, that was a great. That was a fun work. Well, actually, that was my second time working with uh, George Clooney because I did a little. Okay. I did a scene with him in Ocean's Eleven that oh, got okay. cut. Oh, got cut. really? I was gonna say I don't. Re I don't recall. Yeah, they got cut, and, uh, uh, and we talked about it when we got to set, man. And then uh, he, uh, we sat down. Man, George was so cool, man. I mean, like. Out of all the, the A-listers, man, that I've, I've been fortunate to work with, man, he's got to be probably the, the most level-headed, humanitarian type of cool cat, man. It's like, it's, it's freaky. Yeah. And the second day on set when I was working with him, um, I, I, one of my brothers passed away. He was living in Atlanta. In Atlanta. My condolences. Yeah, we were doing a scene, and we and uh, at that time I had a flip phone, and, and he said, okay, keep your phone open, because it was uh, some of it was done on MOS without, without sound. And he was saying, look, just keep the phone open. We'll just ad lib the scene because there's no really dialogue on this. So I said, all right, cat. So I turned the phone on and, and, and did the scene. And when we stopped, I didn't, I forgot to turn the phone off. My nephew called me while the phone was still on and let me know my brother passed away. Oh, my. So before we could finish shooting that day, you know, now I got to walk this thing off, man. I was, it, it threw me for a loop, man. Yeah. And, um, but uh, George came out and, and uh, once, because I told one of the PAs, I got to just let them know, I, you know, I had a little issue. And he literally came out and told me, he said, look, man, I'm sorry about what happened to you. He said, but if, if you want to quit for the day, he said, I'll shut everything down and we can come back and shoot this another day. Mm. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, and that, but, you know, that's, that's only what I would expect from any decent human being. You know, it's, 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 yeah. I, honestly, I, I, I know I have like a little bit of a, like a different opinion on yeah. like a, you know, but I just, you know, I, I, I got zero sympathy for people who can't. That's just decency, if you ask me. That's ex that's how yeah. you should act, right? Yeah, yeah. but you, but it, it, like, I guess when you come from a producer side of things, you're thinking, man, how much does this day cost for us to set all this up to True. shoot today? True. And now we got to shut it down and come back another day. You know what I'm saying? So you True. look at the production value with yeah. all the people on set because there's other folks in the back, there's other actors that are in the scene. So all these people got to come back and get paid again. 
Yeah. Let, yeah. let you take off that day. You know what I mean? That, that, yeah. I mean, I stayed a shot, of course, because I said my brother knew I, he knew where I was at, at that day. I talked to him, I already talked to him and told him what I had to do. Yeah. So I said, you know, it doesn't matter if I leave today, leave now or leave later on the night when we're done. Yeah. It's still going to be there. You know what yeah. I mean? So if I can shake this off and get the work done, I'll be out of your way and you guys keep doing what you're doing. You yeah. know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. That, I think that's, uh, you know, that's kind of the problem with Hollywood because, yeah, absolutely right. From a producer's standpoint, mm -hmm. it's not a good thing, right, to have you just walk out and now I got to pay literally everybody here another day of work. I think that's a big problem with Hollywood. Everything has a dollar sign on it, uh, yeah. including people, right? Yeah. And it, yeah. it's, you know, because yeah. if you think about it anywhere else, if I went into my day job, I was like, listen, you know, my, my brother of all people is not just some distant cousin. He's oh, no, right. Brother, brother, right? Brother, right, right. Passed away today and I'm a mess. It, it's only fair that, yeah, I get, to, I don't have to worry about going to work today. That's right. not the same case in Hollywood. Not when we got millions of dollars literally right. being thrown around here. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And a movie like Michael Clayton, you got all these other actors in it. Uh, Tom Wilkinson is in it, but well, it's cool. I guess Clooney's willing to take the blame because he's Clooney, right? What are they going to yeah. do? Fire him? You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's the one that offered. You know what I mean? He's yeah, like, hey, yeah. look, that, if you that's, believe. That's, all. That's, all. that's a great story. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, yeah. speaking of producers, is, is there any director you liked <clears throat> specifically working with? Because you worked with David Fincher. Um, yeah. Was there anyone who kind of stood out to you that like you liked their style or anything like that? I mean, that? Well, Tony Gilroy, of course, man, because like I said, I did Michael Clayton, I did Duplicity, yeah. and I did a small scene in The Born Legacy with him. You know what I mean? Okay. He's an awesome cat, man. Him, um, John David Coles, I worked with on House of the Cards. House of Cards, yeah. And um, trying to, it was another, another. what else did I work with him on? Oh, um, it was up in Pittsburgh as well. Um, oh, God, what's the name of the dog on show? It's a, it's a, it's a oh, God, it's another cop show with, oh, uh, even made me pull up my stuff, man. Hold up. By all means, do your thing. Yeah. Um, Oh, where's my? Uh... And it's hard to look up because you got a lot of stuff. Seventy. That's what I'm saying, oh, man. You got it. Yeah, deep breath. Once you get over fifty, man, you can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, Chris, I am, I am literally half of that. I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning. Literally, that's not a joke. <laughs> oh man, I'm coming for you now. <laughs> um, um, do no harm. Do no harm. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. I did do no harm with uh, John David Coles. He was the director of that man, and man, that, he's a good guy to work with. I enjoy working with him. Anybody you are? Anybody you haven't worked with yet that you got your eyes on? Ah, oh, man, it's a whole lot of people out there, man. You know, it's a lot of. I mean, it's so many, there's so many productions that are going. I mean, uh, Stephen Caples was cool working with on Creed too, man. He was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, That's right. Creed two wasn't. Um, Oh, I That's probably forgot. Out. No, the actor who made the first one, as uh, a director, who directed. The... No, Stone didn't direct it. He made uh, Black Panther. Oh, you yeah. talking about Creed? Oh, Creed, oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, no, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure. I, I thought that didn't, actor's, didn't Stallone, uh, director's name. Didn't Stallone take Creed, the first Creed movie? No, I thought he no, did. No, 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 no. I was trying no, to think of that no. director. I, oh my I, God, I, he I, made I, Black I, Panther, and I know his name so well. Um, um, I think. Um, I was going to ask you if you worked with him, but then I didn't realize he didn't make uh, Creed. No, he's talking about Ryan Coogler. Ryan Coogler, yes. Yes, yes. Because yes. he's yeah. big up and coming. Yeah. Know, um, he is. And um, uh, Jordan Peele, you're seeing, you know, more and more African-American directors with big budgets, you know. Yeah. Uh, the past yeah. is very, you know, I mean, John Singleton or Spike yeah. Lee, but they, they kind of yeah. didn't, weren't given big budgets, but they're giving yeah. big budget films. Talk a little yeah. bit about Creed too, because it, it was a spin-off movie that, you know, did really well. Mm -hmm. They made a sequel to it. And it was a really good sequel. Really I, heard a, I heard there's a I heard there's a third on its way. Yeah. yeah. I mean when yeah, they, when they it. said it's gonna be like Drago's son versus Crumb, like I hope they don't like, you know, yeah, milk the cow too much, but mm. damn, that was a good movie. That was a good I'm telling you, I, when I watched it, I was like, because you know, you, you know, everybody's skeptical, like, oh man, they're gonna try to do it again, they're gonna keep yeah. milking this cow. But yeah. yo, they made yeah. it work, man. That movie yeah. was excellent, man. I thought they did a great yeah. job yeah. on it. Hey, you can't really go wrong with Michael B. Jordan, honestly. At this point, the yeah. the kids proved himself. You really can't go wrong with right. Him. right. After Kill My after he did Black Panther, I was sold. I was like, all right. <laughs> and uh, what's that movie he did? Um, oh my god, he was the lawyer and um, he was trying to uh, 
and this was another one of those back in the day movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm yeah. talking about? He was trying to free uh wrongly no, accused no. black men. Oh my god, excellent. Yeah, I, I just watched that not long ago too, man. I tell you excellent I, film. Yeah, I, I got uh, junior Alzheimer's over here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I'm gonna start that using was, that one. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> No, but he, that was he did an excellent job excellent in that. Film. Did, excellent man. film. That's one of those those that's one of those movies that that gets me going and like you know really yeah. really you know grinds my gears if you will. Yeah, so I mean I, that's where I that's pretty much I'm at that part I'm at that stage where I'm just waiting for that those roles to hit so I can because I can rock anything they put in front of me, man. Yeah, you know, already know. Yeah. So it's just, yeah. Let me ask you this: mm -hmm. Last few years in Hollywood, we've seen a push for more inclusivity. Yeah. Do you, do you think it's better now? Like now is the you know the climate's changing where we're seeing African American people of color in big budget movies as the lead, you know, not as a side right. character. Right. right. And, and, you know, obviously in the past you'd have like, you know, your Denzels, your Samuel L. Jacksons, your Morgan Freemans, and right. And do you think the environment's changing now, where more and more people of color can break out in more things? You know, because Ruth um, in The Loving, she's now what she's on. She's on AMC, uh, the show Preacher. Preacher. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Have you felt that vibe change or it's it's changing, it's changing, you know, but it's it's still well, I guess it, 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 there's still like some dividing lines in it, you know what I yeah. mean? Um, I mean you see a lot of people of color or African we say African Americans, but a lot of them are coming from England, you know what I mean? A lot of yeah. not even from the States, you know. What That's saying? true. That is so, true. I so. but I've noticed that overall. There's a, we're grabbing a lot of English actors as of late. Exactly. Idris Elba in The Wire. Now, when I first saw The Wire, Idris wasn't as big as he. I didn't know that he was English. And then he watched the. Uh, yeah. He yeah. watched the behind the scenes. He's called the stick English accent. I'm like, whoa, where did that yeah. come from? <laughs> I thought he was from Baltimore, yeah. you know. No, no, man, he's from England. Yeah. Um, is, is there any reason for that? Is it just. I, you know, I, I think I think that there's a, a theory about, you know, uh, actors who studied in England being better than actors studied in America. You know what I mean? And, mm. Yeah, I, you know, I and mean, to me, it's all theory because yeah. acting is, is is human nature. Mm, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, it's talent involved with it, but uh, being a, a student of human nature and, and interaction and, and, and experience in life, you can't learn that in the school. You know what I mean? That's yeah. right. Um, That's very true. Um, you know, and I, I mean, I give them props for it, but I mean, but it's, I guess it's almost like uh, on a job resume, you know, if you got that on your resume, you automatically qualify even though you know somebody who's a journeyman probably has ten, for, forgotten more than you've actually learned. This is true. Yeah. Very true. You know what I mean? Very true. It kind of reminds me of how a lot of times in movies the villain will be English because they sound smarter. You know. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like you see that. Like, no matter how bad a movie is, the villain will be British. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I seem like they're smarter than they are. I, I almost attempted to start going to auditions and talking like this when I go in, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it might help me get like a you never know, you know I mean? If they can do it, why well, can't I, right? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like I feel like a part of it is just because they just at the time, at this current time, they just happen to have more younger up and comers, right? Tom Holland, um, um, John, John, I always pronounce his name wrong, Bo, Bo Giao, uh, he plays uh, Finn. Bo De uh, uh, Boyega, John Boyega. Yeah, yeah right, John, right, John right. Bodega, right? He, uh, you know, I feel like they just have a lot of, uh, a lot of younger upcoming yeah. actors, right? More than we happen to have at the time. You know, I don't think yeah. it's, I don't yeah. think it has anything to do with, oh, it's because they're English. I think they just right. happen well, to have Well, there are a lot of big talented movies dudes. made in England. Because they have like one of the largest, like Star Wars was made in England. Like, you know, they have big yeah, they sound stages over yeah, there. Yeah. So a lot of times yeah. they go film there. Yeah. And they'll just get, you know, English people to play Americans. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. But yeah. the other, other issue, well, issue or topic or whatever discussion, I mean, I have it with a lot of uh, African American actors that I know. Um, and, and, and it comes a lot for a lot of fair complected African Americans. Yeah. Roles don't come to us as easy. Because mm. when they say they want an African American, they usually want somebody of a darker complexion. They want Samuel. They, right, oh. right. You know, they, they, they see back, back, back in you know, back, matter of fact, back in '58 and years prior to that, there was always this thing called the the brown bag test. And if you were lighter than the brown bag, you passed. If you were darker than the brown bag, then you were on the you know the, the side of people didn't didn't like you. You know that kind really. Of thing. I kind of feel really. I've never heard that before. Is it possible that might be true with men? Because I feel like with African American women, 
and there are a lot of talented ones who are light skinned, they were getting the bigger roles because okay. they were. Like I said, we're talking about men. You're absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now right. I see we see a lot of darker skinned women. They were never shown in film. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. And that's not to yeah. say anything against light skinned women. They're all talented. But like it was almost, you know, like you never saw it. Now you see Lupita Nyongo is beautiful. And people are like, right. oh, where'd she come from? Like they've been there. They just wouldn't yeah. show them. No, that's exactly. Uh, yeah, that was so, very so, much a bias. It's almost the opposite for light skinned males. It's almost the same thing as it was for them. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Chris, I mean, Chris, I, I, please. I, I, huh? Please, please do elaborate on this whole brown bag thing. I've never heard this before. A uh, damn, please. Uh, what what is this? Uh, it's 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 an interracial brainwashing of, of black society, where it, you know, um, it, it stems from slavery. It stems from when we were talking about the uh, the slave masters would go in and and ha you know get these women yeah. pregnant. They had these half breed kids, and the light skinned kids were treated a little nicer than the darker skit kids because they mm -hmm. were the slave owners, slave masters kids, that type mm -hmm. of thing. Okay. And there was a lot of jealousy. They they pent us against each other. You don't trust this one because of that. You know, there was it was actually a term they, they referred to as house niggers. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. 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 They worked in the house, the other ones were in the field. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. Was, so they that was a divide and, and the color was one of the biggest issues between them. Mm. And even, even I mean, and I hate to, as much as I hate to say it, even my some of my grandparents on my dad's side, my grand I had a grand my grandparents on my dad's side were older. They were born at the, the end of the 1800s, 1890s. Wow. And um, you know, there was there was a thing in, in some families where if you know you had a kid that went out and started dating somebody, they didn't want you to bring anybody home dark. Mm. You know what I mean? If they darker mm. than this, I don't want them in my house. There was some there were people that really went by that. You know yeah. what I mean? And vice yeah. versa. They were something they were like, but they too late to come in this house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's so, that's I hear it to this day. It's, it's, my family's from Pakistan. Pakistan up until 60 years ago used to be part of India. India was ruled by the British for about 200 years. Okay. Same thing over there. If you're dark brown, yeah. They don't like you. It doesn't matter how mm -hmm. hard you work or how far you get in life. You're like, oh, you know, yeah, my mom, yeah. for example, is a very beautiful one, but she was considered a major catch because she's from part of Pakistan where they almost look Eastern European, kind of like really white skin, you know, mm -hmm. and she, but mm -hmm. people are still judged by that. And I've seen, you know, some of that, you know, racist talk coming from other people of color from our, you know, because we, you know, right. we're born and raised in America, but you have immigrants come here and they see black people because they don't, they don't really grow up with black people in Pakistan. Right. And right. they'll say some ignorance and stuff. Like, yo, yep. my dad's like, it's because yeah. of the yeah. British. Yeah. The British were the top dogs. So if mm -hmm. you look like them, that means you're a better person. It doesn't matter how bad you are. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. The, real, the real kicker was like, like what bothered me because in my, my experience growing up as a kid, I grew up, you know, in Chester, I was in the projects a lot. I was everywhere. And, and in our family, we had all different shades in our family from the darkest dark to the lightest light. And yep. we never, I, in the family, I never had that issue. It was only when I dealt with people outside the family. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, exactly. and, um, and then the crazy part for me is like when it came to society as a whole, they didn't treat me no different than anybody else. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I wasn't getting nothing that I, anything that you wasn't getting, I wasn't getting it either. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yep. they, 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 but there was this 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 brainwashing that that they thought that because you were lighter, some you know people thought more about you or, or respected you, but they don't. They don't yeah, care. No, no, no it's it's never mattered. I'm half white. That that white half has never mattered. Ever. Right. It's always so, just so I'm, black. So I noticed like in roles like like with loving, you know, I mean, you know, they, they actually went through the process of actually matching people up to see if they can get a family that looked like they were together. Yeah. Because the so boys who play your sons look like you. I was like, that's some pretty good casting. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, Ruth Nega looked like my daughter, the whole yeah. nine, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and uh, so they did a good job on that. Um, uh, I'm trying to think on, on, on like on, I mean, Tony Gilroy's thing that, you know, when I worked with him, those were smaller roles. So those were like kind of, they, they were good roles, but they were still insignificant. It wasn't like I was carrying the movie, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, oh, that, and that's another thing too. Like even <laughs> with production, if you look at my resume, most of the productions that I've done have been done by, you know, either studios or networks, you know, big, bigger budgets. Mm -hmm. And there's no African-American productions that actually, actually hired me for anything. Mm. Except for maybe on a low budget level where they didn't have any money, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But but you know the Spike Lees and the, the, I didn't work with none of them cats, man. None yeah, of them. interesting. Did you did you pursue them? Oh, I mean, I, there's been things that come up. I always I've, I've sent stuff out to a whole lot of people, man. You know, but I mean, whether they open it or not, or whether a submission comes through that my agent gets me in for, I, you know, it's up to them to call me in to, to read it once this I'm submitted. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, this is true. I, I it, it's trouble. you know, especially on uh, now, I haven't seen too many of Spike Lee's joints. Um, but 
definitely I've seen damn near everything John Singleton's ever made. And John Singleton definitely seems to put an emphasis on what you were saying. He he tends mm-hmm. to focus on dark skin, right? Yeah. And because in all fairness, especially when we're talking men, it's true. Mm-hmm. You know, dark skin man has been treated a lot more yeah. rough than we have. And it, it's it's yeah. John Singleton seems to highlight that because he wants people to understand mm-hmm. like what's right. going on. You know what I mean? Right. But at, at that same time, that keeps some families from eating just because of their kiss, their yeah, complexion. Which, this is which true. You're, which you're doing the same thing that they did to us. You this know what I mean? This is true. You're Unintentionally, exactly. but it's happening. You're but right. Right. That's what I'm saying. You're still falling into right. the trap. You Absolutely. know what I mean? I'm, I'm curious. To... Now that you've mentioned that, sorry. Go ahead. I, I didn't mean. No, I was going to say. I, I, I just saw uh, Terrence Howard uh, talking about uh, the best man when he got when he got hired for that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And. If you see, you know, Tay Diggs, Morris Chestnut, and, and uh, I can't remember can't the other brother's name, you see the get their complexions. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Terrence Howard said he actually had to have a separate audition, a private audition with the director in order to prove to him that he was the right person for that role. Mm. Wow. Interesting. Because he was right then. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Interesting. I'm you just saying it. It's, 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 that, it's that, you know, and it, it's a shame. And, it, you know, it, it's, I I don't know what I don't know what what it's going to take to actually get rid of that. I mean, because yeah. that's that's you know that's 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 within our own set our own. That, our yeah, own I was, I was, you know yeah, I, mean? I was like, about to say it. That's that's in us. That that's something within our circle that needs to change. Because like yeah. I hear it to this day, and now it's more on like just the joking side, right? But I still hear it to this this day. You know, oh. of us light skin, we're R and B singers. We're all you know, we're the Chris Browns, right? That's all I ever hear. Oh. You know, real oh, smooth, and, and uh, I, soft kind of dudes. Yeah, yeah, you ever go to a comedy club in LA? And, and, oh, and the no. biggest joke is the Beige, the Beige Brothers. They Beige. Yeah. <laughs> they <always> beige. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, that, yeah. Beige, beige ain't in no more. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so it's right there, man. It's just a shame, man. But we, yeah. keep, we keep getting stuck behind that thing, man. It's, yeah. really, it's really unnecessary. You know, I've always really. been like a firm, like, I got no problem with humor, right? Like I'll take a black joke. I don't care. It's a it's a joke, oh, yeah. right? Like yeah. I'm I'm always sure. cool with humor. Always. Right. When it starts right. to directly affect, like you said, there's families that ain't getting fed, they're not getting education, they're not getting jobs, they're not getting this, they're not getting that. That's when it becomes a real right. problem, right? And it might be yeah. minor in comparison, but it's still happening, and that's no excuse. It's still happening. So it right. they, you know, there right. needs to be change, of course, but like at the on that same coin, I feel like there's there's way too much going on right now, right? With the whole social mm-hmm. justice thing, PC thing. Like yeah. it's it's getting to the point yeah. that it's counterproductive, right? Like I, I see it all the right. time. And I be I have to call right. out I have to call out black people because they they they're making a joke essentially out of what's right. trying to be done because it now it's you get caught stealing a candy bar and you cry oh it's because i'm black it's like nah pippin i saw you steal that candy bar <laughs> right, you know right. I, I've, I've had to do it it's it's unfortunate wow, wow. and you know and wow. in, in in hollywood i i can only like guess right because i'm not part of hollywood i don't know right i'm not right, trying right. to act you know but I, <laughs> I i would like to think especially nowadays when we have things like black panther and, and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, we have big billion dollar black led movies that things are, you know, mm-hmm. pumping the brakes a little bit, hopefully anyways. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. my whole thing is, yeah, now, now, that, now that we get to the point where they're starting to have inclusion. Yeah. We need mm-hmm. to make sure that we are including everybody here too. You know what I mean? You, That's right. It's not just, it, it wasn't just, right. It, yeah, it was, we, I mean, America is the melting pot. And we yeah, have our own exactly. melting pot, even in our own race. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, so you can't, you can't yeah. ignore that. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, if you go back in history, we've always been there. You know, yeah. I mean, E.B. the boys, W.E.B. the boys. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. Adam Clayton Powell. You know, you see it. I mean, it's, Clayton, it's, it's, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's, we've been here. You know what I mean? I, the whole I, time I, we've been through the struggle. I think comic Huey books. Newton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think comic books is a great way to include all, not just black, all right? Because we have mm-hmm. things like. Um, her name's Miss Marvel. She's a comic uh, Marvel comic book character, and she's um, I believe she's Pakistani. I'm not sure, but she's from the Middle East. She's Pakistani. Okay. She is okay. right. Yeah, she's Pakistani, and um, right. you know they they have an upcoming Disney Plus show for her, and they wow. they went they went out of their way to make sure that the producers, directors, a lot of these people working on the show 
are Pakistani. So when that part of her character mm-hmm. is on screen, it's right. accurate and it's on point. And I think wow. comic books are an excellent way to for the general audience to see that they're, yeah. you know, to to make race inclusion more of a thing because again, we have movies like yeah. Black Panther, billion dollar yeah. movie, black exactly. led, black directed the whole nine, you know? Right. And uh, that's really where I love about comics right because they've been i told you john stewart the first black green lantern that happened way back in the 70s gotcha. um, yeah. so they've been on top right. of this they've yeah. been trying to include that's right and try to, comic books is and i think this is why i'm so passionate and all things nerd related because mm-hmm. that never really was an issue if you go to like comic-con and all these conventions where all these nerds hang out give a right. damn if you're gay colored they don't care, right? They like inclusive, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you yeah, get into an is. argument is yeah. because yo, know, they're they're talking, they're talking, oh, DC sucks. I like Marvel. That's the only reason you get into an argument, right? <laughs> That's the only you know? fight you have, you know? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So you know, and yeah. I gotta have a love for that, and I gotta have an appreciation for that, you know. Yeah. And I always felt comfortable in that kind of group of people. Nice. Yeah. nice. And you know, with the inclusion thing, even with Asian actors, it's changing. Um, a lot That's of Shang-Chi times- coming up. You know, brown people are almost always cast as terrorists. You know, I love 24, but like that, the only time, you know, you saw that you worked with Alexander Siddig in the store, which I'm trying to find. I can't find it anywhere called uh, Bound or something like that. Boundary. Boundary. I can't find it online anywhere, but uh, he's an actor who unfortunately, you know, he's a great actor. He's in Star Trek, but a lot of times he'll be cast as a terrorist or associated with terrorism stuff. But you see that changing now. Um, There's a Pakistani actor, Kumal, and I I can't, I always forget his last name. I know. You see a lot of Asian actors kind of, uh, especially actors from Southeast Asia, you know, uh, always portrayed as nerds, being picked Mm -hmm. on, you know, Mm -hmm. stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, I like the Big Bang Three, but they they have an Indian guy who's afraid of women. I'm like, look, we made the Kama Sutra. What are you saying we're afraid of women? (laughs) (laughs) That's changing now. That's changed, and that's a good thing. I'm glad, absolutely, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Man, the Kama Sutra, baby, what you talk about? We've been doing exactly. this. <laughs> we turned it into an art, baby. What you, you talk, talk about? about? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Chris, you have done so love much. It. Have you ever thought about getting behind the camera? Yeah, I've thought that's about it. That's a good question. Thought- I've thought about directing and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just in me to do it. But you know how you, there's a certain thing you want to reach at least a certain spot before you say, okay, let me go ahead and jump over. Yeah, I still true. haven't gotten yeah. to where I wanted to be, man. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, um, I, I was always told you, you can only chase one Brinks truck at a time. You know what I mean? Because if true. you try to chase all of them, they'll get away from you. So you get, get get the one, open that door, get what you get out of it, and then go to the next one. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? No, no, I, was, I saw your karaoke videos. And I'm like, he's got a voice. <laughs> <laughs> But that was that. That was I started. I was doing that way before acting, man. Yeah, you, you when you were doing mean? theater. Uh, well, I did. I did some stuff in high school, but then I, uh, I used to get into talent shows. I was in groups and uh, stuff, man. We used to sing and do all that, that that kind of stuff. So I used to. I had ball doing that. Yeah, man. yeah. And the music industry started changing in the, like the mid '90s or so, man. And the music because I'm into old school R&B kind of stuff, man. I like I like the old the harmonies and. You know, even the lyrics, you know, the meanings of some of the words, the songs really had a heart to them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff today is just, you know, whatever's clever. And, yeah. you know, it, it, to, yeah. to me, it just it just didn't have enough soul to it to me. You yeah, know what I mean? Fair but, enough. You know fair what I'm enough. saying? So, so yeah. when, once the music changed, man, and, and that was at the time when I was already dabbling with the act, I said, well, let me just go ahead and just change track to you, man. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about it? You're in Philly, New York's not that far. I mean, of mixing them, doing stuff like Broadway. Has that ever come across your mind, you know, singing and acting? It, it the did at one worlds. point, but I think, you say the best of both worlds? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, it's, it's possible. I mean, you know, it, 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 somebody had an old uh, casting director, I know him for, you know Mike Lemon? You know who Mike Lemon is. Mike Lemon. You know, you know Mike, in Philly, Mike Lemon used to be a big casting director in Philly, man. He was, okay. he's, you know, and he, he's he's he, well, he used to use a term like once you once you got it, you get a lot of years under your belly, so you're getting long in the tooth. <laughs> so you know, like you get long in the tooth, it's like yeah. hey, yeah, that, that's, that's a little yeah. younger cat might be yeah, yeah. back and forth. But now I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, and that that's a fair point. It is, it's a fair point. And I was thinking as you you know as you were saying it, it was you said well I chase one brain's truck at a time, right? And mm-hmm. you know as as you try to build, you know and. You know, we're, we're young, right? We're hungry. We're young. We're still doing this. We're still trying to make a name for ourselves. So the right, creativity right. is still at a peak, right? And it's always mm-hmm. hanging. And we're constantly talking about different ideas and what to do. And it always right. boils down to, well, first, let's build 
this one thing we started with, our main focus, and right, then we can right. start branching and whatnot. Right, that's, you know, what, that's, that's what I was pretty much thinking. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that hunger, yeah, you know, you get hungry and it, 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 you know, it clouds up your mind. You want it now, right? I mean, You're still like, hungry though, right, Chris? Oh, man, I, I, mean, I, I told you, I still got shit that I got to get done. Excuse my there friends. But, <laughs> but, like, yeah, but like, I mean, the thing about Denzel, he didn't start directing until recently. You know what I mean? He'd been out there for a long time, man, grinding. He was already winning Oscars and shit. And then all of a sudden, bam, I'm ready to direct now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he, yep. he yeah. built that house first, man. And then he yep. said, okay, I can go ahead and put a wing on there now. I can That's put right. a wing there. Another That's garage right. in the back. You know what I mean? But you yep. got to build it. You know what I mean? Hey, as long as you're still breathing, there's always time, right? You're still alive. Oh, you can do it. Yeah, right? You, like, it doesn't happen. Have, have to happen no. right now. Right. Call me. I'm lighting it up. Trust. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. There I'm it is. It Listen, Light fellas, I think that is a beautiful note to end it. Chris, thank you so Can much for get- coming. All right. Listen, Chris, let me thank you first for coming on. That was a genuine, great discussion. I appreciate you. You're welcome back anytime you're willing to come around. Oh, man, no problem, man. We do it for you. We do it for the culture. There it is. 